What is happening, Bulls and Bears? It is Tuesday evening. You may be watching this on Wednesday because I'm putting this video out very, very late. It's like 10 o'clock and I'm recording this, 10 p.m. Well, today was a crazy day in my household. A uh, long story that I won't get into here. It's kind of a boring story. Uh, but just to sum it up, when you have a family, your time is not your own, put it that way. Uh, for all of you single people out there that have a lot of time to do whatever you want, I'm a little bit jealous. But I wouldn't change a thing. I love my family. They're the best. And for those of you that do have a lot of time, uh, please make sure that you are checking on your relatives, uh, especially during these times when stress levels are ultra elevated and the cost of living is really throwing a lot of people into, um, in, in many cases, not a very good mental state. And we talked a few reports ago about how the, um, the usage of antidepressants um, has really skyrocketed and it's continuing to grow during these times where so many people are getting buried under just high cost of living. And today we've got a lot on tap for you. And we're going to try to take a little bit of a change in direction on this channel because one of the, let's say, positive feedback points that I've received pretty consistently is, hey, JJ, you give us a lot of information. We appreciate it. But what are the solutions? What can we do to improve ourselves? And what can we do to try to make it through this? And what information can you give us to try to help us? So now along with the news, I am going to try to implement real life um, tricks and tips and whatever else we can think of to try to uh, make this a better situation for us and all of our families, hopefully. Here's what we've got on topic. Cost of living crisis. The fuel poor delivery drivers getting slammed. Producer wholesale prices, what's happening with those. Michael Burry's crash warning. We're going to tell you about what I think about crash predictions. Housing market insanity and greedy CEOs getting more greedy. Let's start at the top. Cost of living crisis. And this is out of the Guardian. Uh, but what's happening in the UK is also happening here in the US to many households. Rising cost of living is having a devastating impact, especially single income households single parent households are being really really challenged by these high fuel prices so what does this mean household budgets are more stressed and stretched and people are looking for just all kinds of ways to try to save money from clipping coupons to using gasoline apps to save a few cents like we talked about in the previous video uh, to trying to get more free lunches from their school free lunch programs and uh, sadly, more people getting on payout and assistance programs. We know those programs are very, very big here in the United States. Well, something that's helped me tremendously with the cost of living crisis and the fuel uh, bills is working at home. It saved me a ton of money and a ton of time. If you're commuting to a job every, every day, you might want to look at working from home. And I'm sure most of you have already um, sought out that opportunity and some people just can't do it uh, for various reasons uh, but that's a huge thing to save yourself on this energy crisis um, a lot of people went out and bought electric cars or hybrid vehicles that can be a big saver but the cost of those vehicles um, can be quite a bit more than just a gasoline vehicle uh, so i hope that you're saving enough to compensate for those higher costs also um, insurance costs can be quite a bit higher on those vehicles because repair costs can be quite a bit higher as well. In fact, there's actually some insurance companies out there that will not even insure Teslas because of the unknown cost of repairs and getting the parts and, uh, and the labor on those uh, cars. And these gasoline prices are causing people to be fuel poor and it's especially hitting the delivery drivers. We just talked about that a few reports ago. Well, now there's more information coming out on the type of impacts that we're seeing for delivery drivers. Recent article out of ABC, rising gas prices hurting delivery drivers working for apps like DoorDash and Grubhub. And I feel really bad for these people. There's a lot of um, people out there that are hustling, they're driving around, they're 
putting a lot of miles and wear and tear on their vehicles and these fuel prices are just dishing out a lot of pain in their incomes take a look at this uh, here's someone working for these delivery services and said the following quote I'm making 10 to 12 dollars an hour versus the 20 to 25 I was making just a short time ago that's Courtney Peterman a mother of five oh my goodness a mother of five who works for DoorDash and Instacart to make money on the side during the winter when her lawn care service is not in operation uh, and this is one of the things that I uh, feel really really bad about this whole situation with this out of control rising cost of living uh, people like this they're working they're hustling she has her own lawn care business during the winter she's trying to work to make make extra income and as she put it down there instead of 20 25 dollars an hour now she's talking about 10 or 12 dollars an hour because of the fuel budget um, so her pay cut in half during the winter months and she's got five kids right now with the health crisis that came out we saw a big surge in demand for these delivery services as more restaurants uh, stayed away from dining in and more people ordering out and carry out so these delivery the need for these delivery drivers boomed and so many people entered that field but now they're getting hit really really hard and we can go back to our previous point you can try to get a, a vehicle that's more fuel efficient I think most of these people they drive smaller cars and uh, four cylinder vehicles um, I'm sure a lot of them went to hybrids and uh, electric vehicles uh, but again the cost of those vehicles the rising maintenance cost the high insurance cost and just the the prices in general of electric vehicles and if so many more people go to electric vehicles what's the cost of electricity going to be we already see amazingly high energy costs electricity costs out here in California uh, it's going to cause even more strain on the power grid the more people go to these electric cars uh, that need charging uh, and it's very difficult to come up with a uh, real world solution for that one you say work at home or don't drive around don't get a job where you have to drive all day well not everybody can work at home and you have to go where there is demand and there is the, a demand for delivery drivers uh, but it's very very difficult now the big solution you could say is pump more oil um, but can we just keep pumping uh, can we just keep pumping unlimited amounts of oil to keep up with all this demand um, well I mean you look at the things that happened like the huge oil spill what was that 2012 uh, where we had that just devastating oil spill that killed so much uh, sea life and caused so much pollution um, I think a lot of people do want to go to green energy uh, but it's just not enough right now um, I remember when I first got uh, a solar calculator back when I was a kid I was like this is amazing this thing doesn't need batteries I don't have, ever have to change batteries it just runs off of light and I was thinking okay by the time I'm 30 um, there's, everything's going to be electric will not need any fuel uh, will not need any batteries being changed because everything's going to be like this solar calculator but uh, look around we're still um, uh, begging begging for uh, for fuel here and uh, more oil uh, being pumped out of the ground uh, which I wish we didn't have to do because it's it's messy and it causes a lot of pollution and it kills a lot of wildlife uh, but what are we gonna do when we need fuel uh, to get around um, you can just say go out and buy an energy efficient car an electric car but they're very expensive so there is no solution here guys please let me know what you think down in the comments I don't have an easy solution for that one uh, I guess some people would say quit uh, drop out of the labor force um, get on some sort of assistance program and uh, just sit at home and eat cupcakes eat cupcakes and watch cartoons uh, please let me know down in the comments uh, what you're doing and what you think about this next on our list producer and wholesale prices yes have went up once again uh, let's look at the February numbers and it's not pretty um, again we have to go back to fuel uh, these rising fuel costs these high fuel costs are affecting businesses and all the transport costs are rising so wholesale prices are rising along with it and they're gonna pass along these wholesale prices these higher wholesale prices to the consumer A recent article here US producer prices climbed 10% in February that's another big leap when you look at the year-over-year -year number 
And uh, the headline here, the subheadline says it all. Um, inflationary pressures remain at intense levels. Intense levels. That's one way to put it. Now, we know a lot of people um, have chosen to eat and make food at home now versus eating out, especially with the work at home uh, situation where so many more people are working from home. Uh, but now even eating, uh, making your own meals and getting food from the grocery stores instead of going out to eat uh, is still taking a big bite out of a lot of people's budget. Uh, so let's go back to uh, possible solutions on this one. Start growing food where you can. I know it's not easy. I've got pests that eat a lot of the food that I've tried to grow. Uh, and I've spoken about that here a few times. I'm going to try to build these um, enclosures with chicken wire so I can put my plants inside these enclosures. Also greenhouses. You can even get small greenhouses that can be shipped. You can even buy them on Amazon. Greenhouses where you can put quite a lot of plants in. So if you have a pest problem like I do, the squirrels, the rabbits, um, even rats. At one point I had rats coming into my yard. Right? And I'm not even in a big downtown area where you would see rat problems like New York City. I'm out in the suburbs and I still had rats coming into my yard at one point. Of course, I put poison out there and got rid of them finally. So grow your own food. What else with the high cost of food? Hmm, this is going to be controversial. Are you ready? Go on a diet. Don't eat so much. Um, there's a lot of people. Well, I shouldn't have to explain this. As you know, if you just walk around... Look around at people when you go to the store. Oh, there's a lot of people out there that are very, very unhealthy. And um, I've had times where I've struggled with um, eating healthy. Uh, but at some point, you've got to uh, do this not just for financial reasons, but also just for health reasons. I mean, having a bunch of extra weight is not going to help you with much unless you're maybe a sumo wrestler or something. Uh, the United States is one of the most obese countries in the world. I read that a few months ago. I don't know if we're the most obese country, but we're one of the most obese and unhealthy countries in the world. All right, but I'll try to give a helpful quote, and I want to make sure I get this right. This is a quote I heard a few years ago. Um, eat to live, don't live to eat. Eat to live, don't live to eat. And as... Prices are rising. Things are getting more uh, difficult. People are getting more stressed out. Uh, a lot of people want to binge eat uh, because they're stressed out. I used to do that myself. I used to sit down and eat sometimes a half a gallon of ice cream if I had a bad day. Or, or I was just wanting to uh, take my mind off something. I would binge eat ice cream. Um, and then the next day I would feel guilty and I'd go have like a two and a half hour workout somewhere. Uh, you know, back when I had more time. Uh, but yeah, please uh, watch your diet and um, you know try to slim down. Now of all times, especially uh, with these food prices, try to slim down, uh, grow your own food. Uh, what else can you leave for us down in the comments? Please let me know what I missed. Let's go on to the next topic here. And let's go ahead and transition a little bit here to the markets. Let's talk about what billionaire Michael Burry is out there saying. He's got a crash warning. Now, folks, just because I'm reporting on someone that's speaking about a crash doesn't mean that I'm predicting a crash. All right, I've told you, and I'll have to say it again here because every video where I even mention the word crash, people are saying, you predicted a crash. No, I'm not predicting a crash. But here's how it works. When the big money people all decide to sell at once, that's when the crash will happen. Um, so in other words, people are gonna decide when the market crashes. Um, let's put these numbers out again. When it comes to the stock market and stocks in general, the top 10% own nearly 90% of all stocks. The top 10% own nearly 90% of all stocks. That's extraordinary. Uh, that means if a lot of those people or those uh, investment houses, investment firms, companies, uh, if they all get together at once and decide to sell, uh, they can have major impacts on the market and they can move the markets. Also, the top 1% own about 50% of all stocks. So even if the top 1% decide to get together and sell at once, you're going to see a big drop in the market. So 
Uh, a crash could happen at any time, of course, uh, but also this market could double just because of all the easy money policies that are out there. Um, just look over the past two years, we have nearly doubled the money supply. It's an 80% increase in uh, dollars in existence just over the past two years since the health crisis rolled out about two years ago. All right, so this story has been making the rounds. Michael Burry's crash warning in his portfolio. One of the stocks that he has exited or had exited at the end of 2021 was CVS Pharmacy, and I can't blame him for that. Um, here's a long-term chart here of CVS Pharmacy, and we see uh, the big run up to over $112. Well, we're now at about 107. We took a dip back down here and it's a good time to sell just by looking at the chart plus we see what's happening in retail and we know that in some of the cities cvs pharmacies have closed down and walgreens pharmacies also because of the massive rise in theft and smash and grab robberies so maybe michael burry sees the writing on the wall maybe that's why he sold cvs and the article didn't go into much more detail uh, besides the fact that he did sell um, his CVS holdings uh, but yeah maybe he sees the writing on the wall and uh, when you look at what's happening with crime now uh, I think retail stocks should be something that people uh, might want to think twice about or at least be cautious about investing in of course if you're getting a nice dividend um, you know there are still advantages to some of these stocks but um, I would still be cautious and try to be balanced you know the best you can all right and just a tip here you know don't get too greedy. Um, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. I hate to quote Jim Cramer, but uh, I think he was right on that one. All right, if you're all in thinking that these markets are invincible and that they're only gonna go up, um, you're gonna be hurt big time when you see a correction or a pullback. Uh, even oil took a big drop here recently, which was bound to happen. Uh, I think ultimately we're gonna see 140, 150 a barrel uh, but pullbacks happen. Uh, we saw the stock market drop big time in 2020 when the health crisis came out and it just got pumped back up. So just because something drops or crashes doesn't mean that it's not going to proceed back to new all-time highs. And uh, who knows, in this type of a manipulation here in this economy, um, they could double the money, money supply again in the next two years. Uh, what's stopping them? Um, nothing. Nothing's stopping them. And again, you have people behind the scenes that are making these decisions. If they decide to double the money supply and um, create more dollars, just like we did, 80% increase in dollars in just in the past two years, what if they do it again? Um, right? So again, people trying to predict what's going to happen here. Um, you know, you're trying to predict or guess what the man behind the curtain is going to do. Um, good luck with that. Um, just be prepared either way is, is what I try to urge here on this channel. Uh, next, housing market insanity and greedy CEOs get more greedy. Let's talk about these last two topics here. Discovery CEO David Zaslav's 2021 pay package soars to $246 million ahead of a Warner Media merger. Wow, $246 million. That's nearly one quarter of a trillion dollars, folks for just his 2021 compensation. So what can we say about this besides greed? Um, I don't know how some of these CEOs uh, do it. I mean, yes, you wanna make as much money as possible, but once you get so rich, I couldn't make that type of money knowing that there are people working for my company that are living paycheck to paycheck. I just couldn't do that. Um, maybe it takes a special kind of unique individual just to want to have that much money, probably more money than he'll ever be able to spend um, in his life. Um, but what do you say that about that? I mean, what can we do about it? I mean, we can stop watching uh, the Discovery Channel, but it's much more than that. He's basically got a media empire. Um, take a look at here. Discovery Inc., American multinational mass media television conglomerate. And take a look at all these channels under the umbrella of Discovery Inc., and uh, I watch quite a lot of these channels, um, so I guess I'm contributing to this uh, Mr. Greed's pay package here. Discovery Channel, Food Network, HGTV, TLC, Animal Planet. I love Animal Planet. 
um, ID, which is investigation, discovery, a lot of crime stories and solving crimes. Uh, the Science Channel, Discovery, Oprah, Motor Trend, um, on and on and on. So many different channels. And, um, you know, we could say, you know, don't watch these channels because of the CEO. Um, but these are popular channels. I know a lot of people have cut the cable completely. Congratulations to you. Uh, most of the shows that I watch now are on a, uh, in a streaming device. Um, but these um, CEOs making these levels of uh, th this amount of salary, you know, it's kind of uh, making me want to completely not watch any of this. Uh, but entertainment is something that just a lot of people have a hard time pulling the plug on. Um, but I would just suggest try not to spend so much money. If you can cut the cable bill, do it. Get a streaming device and a lot of these uh, channels you can watch stuff for free on the streaming device. Of course, you still have to pay for internet. Uh, some apps make you pay a monthly fee. Of course, you have apps out there like Netflix. Um, if you must have entertainment, maybe just try to limit yourself to just a couple apps that you're paying for instead of a, uh, a monthly cable bill, which can be easily hundreds of dollars. So that would be my um, word of maybe advice. And uh, please let me know what you think down in the comments about that one as well. Finally, let's talk about the housing market. And we've got more insane numbers in the real estate market to report. And this is out of Redfin. A record 8% of all homes in the U.S. are now worth a million dollars. 8% of all homes. And that percentage is now double of what it was just a little more than two years ago before the great health crisis came out. Uh, the biggest jump was in Anaheim here in California in Orange County. 55% uh, of homes in Anaheim are worth a million dollars or more. That's up from 27% just two years ago. So million dollar houses everywhere. 8% of all homes, a million dollars. All right. I remember uh, growing up even as a teenager uh, thinking, wow, a million dollar house. You know, this person must be a celebrity, must be a movie star. Uh, now a million dollar house is just somebody um, maybe working at, um, who knows, a grocery store that just got a big loan. And uh, now they watch their home value skyrocket because they live in a coastal city, um, Orange County, and cities like that. And as home prices can continue to skyrocket, um, a lot of these people with these million dollar houses, they're going to be paying more in taxes than a lot of people are paying in rent in some of these other states. Uh, for example, you're paying $600 for an apartment in Kansas, and uh, some of these people in these million dollar homes are going to be paying $600 a month just in taxes uh, and even more than that in some cases that they just bought here in the past few years at these elevated prices. Uh, so million dollar homes everywhere folks what do you think uh, what do you do about it move to a lower price area uh, if you can't afford to live somewhere move out I've thought about moving out of California um, but I'm pretty much anchored down here with a lot of roots here a lot of family um, in California so I'm gonna be here still for a little while riding out the storm, riding out the high cost of living, and uh, continuing to bring in new news and updates. I'm going to try to bring this more of a practical approach here to these reports and uh, more solutions instead of just being in awe of how bad things are getting, uh, more like we did today. So I hope you guys like it. Please let me know down in the comments what you think. Please subscribe if you haven't and come back to this channel. Please give it a thumbs up if you like the format here, if you like the news and the analysis and the commentary. Big love to all of you. Be well. Stay safe. Keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.